65. The Jack Benny Program, presented by Lucky Strike. Be happy, go lucky, be happy, go lucky, strike, be happy, go lucky, go lucky, strike today. I like to dance and have good fun, and naturally I say, for smoking joy and better taste, go lucky, strike today. You'll agree, Lucky's taste better than any other cigarette. If you are looking for a brand that you can smoke with zest, then you should switch to Lucky Strike, cause fine tobacco's best. That's why... Lucky's taste better than any other cigarette. Be happy, go lucky, be happy, go lucky, strike, be happy, go lucky, go lucky, strike today. Friends, Lucky's taste better than any other cigarette you've ever smoked. That's a fact. They've got a taste all of their own. It's perfect. Yes, Lucky's are mild, rich, smooth. Everything that means more smoking enjoyment for you. And the reason is fine tobacco. You see, fine tobacco and only fine tobacco always gives you a better tasting cigarette. And L.S. M.F.T. Lucky Strike means fine tobacco. So light up a Lucky and you'll agree with the millions of smokers who know Lucky's taste better than any other cigarette. Yes, for complete smoking enjoyment, be happy, go Lucky. Make your next carton Lucky Strike. Be happy, go Lucky, go Lucky Strike. Remember, Lucky's taste better than any other cigarette. The Lucky Strike program starring Jack Benny with Barry Livingston, Phil Harris, Rochester, Dennis Day, the Sportsman Quartet, and yours truly, Don Wilson. Ladies and gentlemen, while Jack Benny was away in Las Vegas, he gave Rochester the week off. As we look into Jack's home in Beverly Hills, it is morning. Rochester hasn't returned yet, so Jack is preparing his own breakfast. Now, where's that can of coffee? Oh, here it is. I hear music and there's no one there. Gee, coffee is so expensive now. <laughs> look at the pictures of Chase and Sanborn. They're smiling. <laughs> now, let's see. How do you make coffee? Oh, yes, there's an old saying. Use one spoonful for each cup and one for the pot. See, I want about three cups. One. Two. Three. And... Eh, the heck with the pot. <laughs> Now I'll get the uh, dishes and the silverware here for the table. I hear music, but there's no one there. I smell blossom, but the trees are bare. Having breakfast in my underwear. <laughs> I wonder why. I wonder why. Well, I've got the table set. Gee, I hate to eat alone. I wonder where Rochester put that big mirror. <laughs> oh, yes, it's in my bedroom. I hate to sleep alone, too. <laughs> Uh-oh, the coffee's starting to percolate. <laughs> I've got the only coffee pot that's also on the Judy Canova show. <laughs> Now, let's see. What else do I want for? Who's that? It's me, boss. Well, so you finally got here. You should have been home yesterday. I know. Well, where have you been? Well... Now, come on, Rochester. Tell me, where have you been? Do you want the truth or an amazingly interesting alibi? <laughs> I want the truth. I wish you'd listen to the alibi. I worked on it all morning. <laughs> Never mind the alibi. Just tell me where you've been. Well, since I had a week off, I went down to stay with some friends in San Diego. Uh-huh. My friends introduced me to some of their friends who insisted that I stay with them for a while. Uh-huh. Then their friends introduced me to 
to some of their friends, and they made me stay with them. Uh-huh. And I finally friendly my way clear to San Francisco. <laughs> Rogers, if you went from San Diego to San Francisco, you had to come through Los Angeles. Why didn't you stop? My friends, friends, friends didn't have any friends here. <laughs> oh, so you spent most of your time in San Francisco. Didn't you get my car from Louisville? <laughs> Louisville? Oh, so you went to the Kentucky Derby? Yeah. How'd you do? The horse I bet on couldn't even friendly himself into third place. Well, it serves you right. If you'd been back here last night instead of the... I'll get it. You finish my breakfast. Thanks, I'm starved. I mean, finish cooking it. <laughs> Coming. I hear music and there's no one there. I smell blossoms. Oh, hello, Dennis. Hello, Mr. Benny. Was that you singing? Yeah. You'll never get two shows. <laughs> never mind that. What'd you come over here for? Well, I wanted you to hear the song I rehearsed for the program. Oh, yes. Come in. Thank you. Now, Dennis, go in the... Hey, wait a minute. What's that you got under your arm? Oh, blueprints. I'm building a new house for me and my folks. Really? Let me look at the plan. Sure. Here. Hmm, this looks nice. This is the dining room, isn't it? Uh-huh. And right up here is the master bedroom. The master bedroom? Yeah, see? The dressing table goes here, the chaise lounge goes here, the refrigerator goes here, and the stove goes there. Well, that... Wait a minute, Dennis. Why would you have the refrigerator and stove in the bedroom? My mother likes to have breakfast in bed. <laughs> well, Dennis, if your mother likes to have breakfast in bed, why can't your father bring it in from the kitchen? Because then the food would get all cold and soggy. The food would get... <laughs> Cold and soggy? Why? To get from the kitchen to the bedroom, you have to go through the living room, and that's where we have our swimming pool. <laughs> you have a swimming pool in the living room? That's ridiculous. No, it isn't. Look what we save on rugs. <laughs> well, this is the craziest house. I... Dennis, why would you have... No, no, I'm not going to ask you. There's no question you can ask that the architect already didn't. Dennis, I've really had enough, but since I haven't had breakfast yet and I've got nothing to lose, we'll continue. <laughs> when are the workmen going to start building your house? Huh? Oh, this afternoon, I want you to come to the housewarming tonight. <laughs> Dennis, if I can guess how the men can finish the house so fast, will you sing your song? Uh-huh. The carpenters are drinking Hatter Call. Huh? <laughs> The name of my song is No One But You. I knew it. I knew it. <laughs> no one but you holds the key to my happiness since you let my two eager arms possess you, you unbelievably warm, inconceivably wonderful. Speak the language I understand No touch holds the magic that's in your
beautiful song, Dennis. It'll be fine on the program. Thanks. Can I go home now? I don't want to be late for the housewarming. Yes, yes. Go, go. Now, Dennis. Hey, Jackson. Jackson, stretch them tired old legs and come over here. I want to tell you something. Hey, Mr. Benny, it's Phil. Thanks for telling me, kid. For a minute, I thought it was the Duchess of Windsor. <laughs> come on, let's see what he wants, huh? Dennis, you don't have to hop on every track. <laughs> now walk like I do. <whistles> now cut that off! <laughs> Silly kid. No sideburns yet. <laughs> what do you want, Phil? Oh, hiya, Jackson. Look, I wanted to show you something I bought. Ain't they cute? Say, the dress is for a little baby. Yeah, they're too small for your children, aren't they, Phil? Oh, they're not for my kids. They're for Sammy the drummer's new baby. His wife had a little girl last week. Oh, I didn't know that. I'll have to call him up. Yeah, and say, Jackson, for a present, don't charge him for the first month's diaper service. <laughs> I won't, I won't. Have you seen the baby yet, Phil? Yeah, she's awfully cute. She's got her mother's lips mother's eyes and Sammy's hair. <laughs> well, don't worry. She'll grow her own, you know. I doubt it. Sammy never did. <laughs> hey, that's right. By the way, Phil, you were supposed to drop over last night and talk to me about some musical arrangements. Why didn't you show up? Oh, I couldn't, Jackson. Last night, Alice dragged me into one of them meetings of the Parent Teachers Association, and, man, it was really embarrassing. Embarrassing? Yeah. I didn't know what they were talking about. One guy gets up and suggests that they coordinate all visual training aids. Uh -huh. Then the fellow in front of me raises his hand and suggests faculty representation at the bilingual festival in Ecuador. <laughs> hmm. Then the fellow behind me makes a suggestion that a psychoanalytical basis be applied to compensate for the individual variance during the early academic year. <laughs> So, uh, not to embarrass Alice, I got up and made a suggestion, too. Well, good for you, Phil. What'd you suggest? I made a motion they redecorate the cocktail bar in the school cafeteria. <laughs> Phil. Phil, you made a suggestion like that? Yeah. I'm not worried about this tire, but how do you get these feathers off? <laughs> Oh, so that what about... I thought you were going where the wild goose go. Oh. <laughs> hey, that's very funny. Look, I gotta run along now. <laughs> I'm sorry, I can't hear more of that. But I... <laughs> I gotta run off and leave it, though, Jackson. I'll see you later. Okay. Oh, wait a minute, Phil. As long as you're going down to the cleaners... I wish you'd take a few things for me. What makes you think I'm going to the cleaners? That bundle of clothes lying on the back seat. That's Ramley. <laughs> Ramley? Then why have you got those two straps around them? There's a handle on the back. It's easier to carry. <laughs> oh, yeah. Look, he's still got those labels from the time we were in London. Now, there you go again. <laughs> so long, Jackson. Goodbye, Phil. <laughs> Benny, I'm gonna go home now. Okay, Dennis, so long. So long. What a cast I've got. Dennis is stupid, Don is fat, and Phil has live luggage. <laughs> Sometimes I wonder... Oh, if... boss, Miss Livingston's on the phone. I'll take it in the living room. I hear music. Hello, Mary. Hello, Jack. I told you I'd come over this afternoon, but I won't be able to. Why not? Well, tomorrow's my sister Bay's birthday, and right now I'm downtown doing some shopping. Babe's birthday, eh? What are you going to get her, Mary? Well, I don't know. It's a problem. Oh, it shouldn't be hard to get Babe a gift. There's so many things she hasn't got. Jack, the things she hasn't got, money can't buy. <laughs> oh, well, it is a problem. So it's Babe's birthday, eh? How old is she, Mary? 39. 39? 
Go on, she's as old as I... Oh, oh. oh. <laughs> well, look, Mary, while you're buying a gift for Babe, buy her something for me, too. Okay. Uh, how much do you want to spend? Oh, I don't know. Get her a wristwatch or a good bottle of perfume or a silk scarf or a pair of stockings. Or a half a pound of candy. Wait till I get down to it. <laughs> I was afraid you'd pass it. You can stop with that, too. Last year, I gave Babe a pair of gloves. I know, but when the fight was called off, you took them back. <laughs> <laughs> took them back, took them back. Mary, if you're shopping at the May Company, tell them to take the candle out of the window. You're home. <laughs> not kidding. Remember Myrtle behind the lingerie counter? Yeah. Well, I'm going to be her summer replacement. <laughs> good, good. Now, Mary, while you're there, will you... Wait a minute. Rochester! Rochester! I'll have to hang up, Mary. There's someone at the door. Okay, bye. Goodbye. Coming, coming. Oh, oh, I wasn't expecting to see you again, Mr... Mr... Collins of the Department of Internal Revenue. Oh, yes, yes, Mr. Collins. And you remember my assistant, Herbert Thompson? Yes, yes. How do you do? How do you do? <laughs> uh, what can I do for you gentlemen this time? Well, Mr. Benny, for a month now, we've been working on your 1950 income tax return, and we still can't believe that a man in your position only spends $17 for entertainment. Well, I'm sorry, but that's all I spent. But since you gentlemen are here, there's a question I'd like to ask you about income tax. Well, we'd be glad to help you if we can. Well, last week I did a broadcast from the Nellis Air Force Base at Las Vegas. And since I was in Las Vegas on business, can I legally deduct my losses there? Well, I don't know. What did you lose? One of my riders. <laughs> We heard your show and thought you lost all of them. <laughs> now, look, gentlemen, you've been here four times already. Uh, that's only because we're trying to help you. I know, I know. Now, uh, Mr. Benny, you have one item here on your 1950 return that puzzles us. If you uh, want us to keep it confidential, we certainly will. Well, thank you. What is it? This item you've got down as a deduction here, uh, $28 for a nightgown for Ann Sheridan? Oh, oh, yes, that was a replacement. I burned hers while I was ironing it. <laughs> she's, uh, she's one of my best customers. Any other questions? Uh, no. Let's go, Herb. Goodbye, Mr. Benny. Goodbye. Goodbye, gentlemen. Goodbye. <laughs> I, I think it's, it's just wonderful the way those two men have been trying to help me. Oh, boss, your breakfast is still waiting. Well, bring it in the library, Rochester. I'm going in and read a while. Been so busy lately, I haven't had time to do any reading. Let's see. Got a lot of new books here. Here's one. Neither Five Nor Three by Helen McInnes. Oh, I read that. It's good, too. The Cane Mutiny by Herman Woke. I remember him. He used to write for Fred Allen, then quit to go to war. <laughs> A coward. <laughs> now, here's one. King Midas and His Golden Touch. Oh, I remember reading King Midas. Had such a sad ending. They cured him. <laughs> Oh, here's a new one. I was Shanghai. Hey, that sounds exciting. I think I'll read it. There we are. I was Shanghai. As I lie here, bound in chains in the brig of a pirate ship, knowing that in a few short hours I must walk the plank, I realize that all this happened to me only because... I was Shanghai. <laughs>
all started in a little waterfront saloon in the town of San Francisco in the year 1792. I hadn't meant to go to San Francisco. I just friendly my way there. <laughs> I was about to order a drink when the bartender said to me, Where are you from, partner? I'm from Texas. Texas? Where's your southern accent? I lost it in Las Vegas. <laughs> no! Yeah, I try to make two you-alls the hard way. <laughs> Now, give me a drink. I just picked up my glass when suddenly a man sneaked up behind me and hit me over the head with a club. It didn't knock me out, but the room became blurred, twisted, and distorted. For a minute, I thought I was watching television. <laughs> but it couldn't be. This was 1792, and the coaxial cable only went from Lexington to Concord. <laughs> In fact, when Paul Revere made his famous ride, we got it by kinescope. I'll never forget. Channel one if by land, channel two if by sea. I had two more jokes on this when I was slugged again. When I came to, I was lying on the floor, trussed up below decks on a ship at sea. After many hours, the first mate came in, untied my arms and legs, and said, All right, you landlubber, up on your feet. There's work to be done. Wait a minute, what am I doing here? We shanghaied you two days ago in a Frisco saloon, matey. Shanghaied me? Where am I? You're aboard the pirate ship SS Saratan. <laughs> a funny name for a pirate ship. Why do they call it the Saratan? We sneak up on our prey by sailing backwards. <laughs> uh, well, tell me... Stow the gab, matey. There's work to be done and done quick. You'll have to reef in the topsail, get the mizzenmast or the forecastle, keel haul the navigator, box the compass, reef the jib, port the helm, and swab the poop deck. What does that mean? I don't know, but the censor wanted to take it out. <laughs> Look, I'm not taking orders from you. I want to see the captain. Well, he's over by the mizzenmast, but I wouldn't go near him if I were you. He's the cruelest, most vicious, bloodthirsty pirate that ever sailed the seven seas. I don't care. I'm going to see him anyway. It's your funeral. As I walked across the deck, I had my first chance to see all the pirates. They were a motley crew and showed the signs of many battles. Some had long, livid scars. Some had their arms and slings. And one of them had his head missing. <laughs> and yet he was singing. He was the inspiration for that song. I hear music and there's no one there. <laughs> Then over to one side. I saw four of them swabbing the deck. As they worked, they sang an old sea chanty. Sailing, sailing over the bounding main, for many a stormy wind shall blow where Jack comes home again. Sailing, sailing over the bounding main, we're happy go lucky that you go. It's lucky's once again. All the sailors agree that LSMFT's find the back of you see. Every sailor man is hopping on a lucky, cause there's nothing that'll beat a good old lucky when you're out at sea. Lucky strike is wild, very tasty, that's true. Lucky strike is round, and it's fully packed too. Don't forget the something treasure, here's a tip that you will treasure. Only Ellis, 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 MFT will do. Oh, it's Ellis, 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 MFT. Ellis, 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 MFT. most vicious, bloodthirsty pirate that ever sailed the seven seas. Ooh, am I? <laughs> Well, look, Captain, I'm going... Wait a minute. I've seen this ship before, years ago in San Francisco Harbor. Certainly. We pirates captured it. It used to be an American warship, the USS Ulysses S. Sassafras. 
The USS Ulysses S. Sassafras. Yes, the USS Ulysses S. Sassafras. Batten down the hatches. It's starting to rain. <laughs> don't be silly. It's only us. Fine buccaneer you are. I don't think you know anything about pirates. I don't, Hey, Look, I've sailed the seas under such bold pirates as Captain Kidd, Blackbeard, Jean Lafitte, and Milton Berle. <laughs> Wait a minute. What sea did you sail with Milton Berle? The NBC. I knew you there. I was Shanghai, and I want to get off this ship. Nobody gets off this ship. Ahoy, mates, ahoy! You up in the crow's nest, what do you see? There's a ship off the starboard bow. She's going around in circles. Is she a three-master or a four-master? A mixed master. <laughs> what? She shows the colors of King Ferdinand of Spain. A Spanish galleon, open fire! <laughs> Look, they're firing back. We're hit, we're hit, a mixed Spanish galleon, eh? Si. And you're ready to surrender? Si. Then we will feed you and your men. Do you like beans? Si. What kind of beans do you like? Soy. Soy? Si. Now cut that out. We know your ship is on a secret mission. You better tell us about it. Now talk fast. Come on, senor. It's for that key. El mundo es redondo. Y por tele razón. Hemos hecho la vuelta del mundo muchas veces. Oh, look out, matey. He's losing his temper. He's beginning to boil. <laughs> it was then that I recognized him. He was an old coffee pot. I used to know him. I tried to take command of both ships, but suddenly the men turned on me. It was mutiny. The crew picked me up and put me on the plank. And with guns in my back, there was only one thing I could do. But instead of walking, I rode off the plank on a Schwinn bicycle. <laughs> this is another plug. But when you're that close to doom, you gotta think fast. I was Shanghai. Back, we'll be back in just a moment. But first, let's relax and have some happy-go-lucky fun at Coney Island. The Hall of Mirrors mixed me up, but still it's clear to me that fine tobacco really counts of LSMFT. You'll see, too. Lucky's tastes better than any other cigarette. Step right up and take a chance and hit the Red Bull's eyes. You'll win the tops and smoking joy, because Lucky's are the prize. You can bet Lucky's tastes better than any other cigarette. Be happy, go lucky, be happy, go lucky, strike me happy, go lucky, go lucky, strike today. Friends, the really important thing about a cigarette is the quality of the tobacco that goes into it. That's why the makers of Lucky Strike choose ripe, light, naturally mild tobacco. Tobacco that makes Lucky's taste better than any other cigarette. No doubt about it, fine tobacco and only fine tobacco always gives you a better tasting cigarette. And LSMFT, Lucky Strike, means fine tobacco. So for complete smoking enjoyment, for everything you want in a cigarette, be happy, go lucky. You'll agree, Lucky's taste better than any other cigarette you've ever smoked. Yes, make your next carton Lucky Strike. Be happy, go lucky, go lucky, strike today. Remember, Lucky's taste better than any other cigarette. Good night, everybody. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System. <laughs> 